Nope, we're just waiting. Oh. Give us one second to get it streamed and, and recorded. Uh, yes, I was having some technical difficulties on my end. We are live now. We are recording. The meeting is yours. Thank you, Roger. All right, I will call this uh, special meeting of the Board of Finance to order. Uh, first, I will do a roll call. Myself, Tim O'Brien is on. Glenn Frischman, are you on? I am present. Mike Fowerbach. I'm here. Lynn Young. Here. Deb Norman. Here. Bob Statchen. Present. And Dave Motherway. I did not see Dave Motherway, so but we'll can keep going on. We have a quorum. Um, the first item on the agenda is comments from the public. And um, I'll start off with, we received a letter on September 23rd from Ms. Tracy Swain, uh, sharing concerns with both the Board of Finance and Board of Ed activities pertaining to the Chinny investigation and other Board of Ed activities. A copy of this letter will be attached to the meeting minutes um, to be referenced. Are there other comments from the public? Any other comments from the public? Any other comments from the public? I see nobody else uh, attending the meeting at this time. Yeah, I didn't know who was the 599 or the 860 number, so um, we're good. All right, um, new business we have here is set the 2021 meeting calendar. Uh, you got the letter from the town clerk, it would be uh, my suggestion that we continue with the meetings on the first Wednesday of the month at 715. Hopefully we can get back in person sometime soon. Um, can I get a motion? I don't, do I need a motion, Jim? Do you think? No, I think no we this one you don't need a motion. Huh? Yeah, I didn't, I think we can just discuss this one and, and come to a consensus. So if, um, what is the pleasure of the board members? Glenn, I'll start with you. Yeah, when first Wednesday of the month works well. Okay. Mike, is that good for you? Yeah, yeah, that, that does. That, although, that, although, sorry, can you just clarify? Okay, hey, hey. Glenn, can you mute? Glenn, can you mute? All right. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that, the, the, yeah, the Wednesdays work fine. I guess my question is if we're continuing virtually, um, or would we consider the, the, the slot we've got now? Um, and then if we go in person, push. push I, I would need to push back by the, the our old time slot if we're, if we're doing it in person. But if we're continuing to do it virtually, I'm fine with this slot. I, well, um, so I think what the town clerk needs the form filled out for is to make sure we reserve the the room. So if we were in person. Um, I agree with you, Mike, if we're in person, I can't do this time slot, but I can do the normal one. Um, but virtually this one works. So there's nothing that says we can't continue with special meetings. Um, and then I think for the budget hearing, there's a, there's a, you know, as we get into budget times, there's a desire to be able to see each other if we can. So I think I'd like to schedule with the town clerk that our normal meetings will be the first Wednesday of the month at 7.15 p.m. in the police station meeting room. And then um, if we have to stay virtual, we can we can move to this time slot here. Yep. Yeah, that proposal works well for me, thanks. Okay, does anyone have a problem with that proposal? Let me ask it that way, as opposed to uh, asking for affirmation. Okay, so hearing hearing none, Jim, can you and Jim, Jim or Jill, how do you want to do this? Because I got to sign that. Do you want to fill it in, or do you want me to fill it in? Um, I'll fill it in. I'll, yeah. it. I'll fill it in. PDF it to you. You sign it, then you can PDF it to Glenn and have him sign it. And, and with Glenn can PDF it. I don't know if he can or can you drop it off or put it in the mail. Um, yeah. Or what I'll do is I'll. Um, arrange to uh, find a place that we can sit six feet apart and have a gin and tonic and Glenn and I can sign it there. And we'll, I'll get it dropped off at town hall. Um, in that case, then I can deliver it personally. What's that? In that case, I can deliver it personally to the city. <laughs> 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 All 
That's perfect. Okay, we'll we'll come up with something so that you, Glenn, and I can fill it in um, for first Wednesday of each month at 7.15 p.m. in the uh, police station meeting room. Uh, and then I hope everyone saw the uh, email that was circulated from Stacy Haskell, and I'd like to thank Stacy and Jill for really doing a heck of a good job uh, trying to come up with the budget dates for everyone so that we're not as jammed up as we were last year. Um, again, we don't know if it will be in person or virtual at this time, but we have secured the district office meeting room for 5 to 10 p.m. on the dates that were on the email listed. So try and block those off while you're while you're looking out uh, at schedules through uh, March and April. Um, going through that. Does anyone have any questions on those or any feedback on the uh, budget meeting dates? No, it's all good. Okay. okay. Um, additional appropriations reviewing uh, the year to take additional appropriations. Sorry, did we want to do previous minutes? Oh, you know what, Mike, thank you. I skipped right by that and I, I absolutely missed it because I wrote my hand notes. Um, can I get a motion to approve the previous minutes or the minutes of the September 23rd, 2020 special meeting for the Board of Finance? So moved. So moved. I had a motion from Mike and a second from Glenn, I think I heard. Um, any discussion, any changes or comments on the minutes? I did have one thing just on the uh, bottom of page two under additional appropriations. Uh, I think that second to last bullet point that starts with Miss Young motion to approve additional appropriation request from first select from Hughesboro. Um, you know, if you read that whole section, you know, there was a motion on the table that was withdrawn. Um, but then the very last sentence says motion yep. carry. So my my recollection recollection there is we, we we withdrew the the motion, agreed on how we would, you know, proceed to to to, to fund this, but it wasn't a you know, there wasn't a new motion, right? Or, or if there was a new motion, that should be stated here. Um, but if not, I think the simplest thing is just to delete motion carry. Or, or all or or is that yeah it's just confusing or was the motion to withdraw the motion so that's it. yeah it was a bit high it's jill it was a little confusing the conversation kind of went um you did withdraw the motion and there was another motion made and um there was a yay or nay on it so that's why i put that it was in favor and the motion carried um so do you want me to just add in that the first motion was withdrawn? I probably should have put that in. I think you did have somewhere in there, uh, where was it, uh, about the motion being withdrawn, or maybe I'm confusing. Uh, Mike, I, th I think what happened was we withdrew the motion to have an additional appropriation that was withdrawn. Then we made a motion, as I remember, to um, support the uh, uh, funding of that to engage the engineering firm, but that it would be paid after January 1 in arrears. That's what I remember. Yeah, so maybe we just need a, a, a statement there. Yeah, so feel that a second motion was made or a new motion was made, yeah. made you know, after January 1 in arrears and that motion carried. Okay, yep, I can make that a little clearer. Okay. Yeah, because the, the yep. second motion was more so that we showed that there was um, there was support for doing that and so that there was no question after January 1 that we would that we would support it. Okay, yep, I can I can make that clearer. Any other comments or corrections? Yeah, nothing further from me. Thanks. Anything from anyone else? All right. All in favor of passing the of accepting the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 
Any opposed, please state your name and that you are opposed. Opposed. Okay, the motion's unanimous. The motion's unanimous. Minutes are accepted. All right, now we are at additional appropriations. Uh, review of the year to date of additional appropriations to fund balance from fund balance for fiscal 1920. We have no changes from the last meeting. Uh, and then review of year to date additional appropriations from fund balance for fiscal 2021, which you should have gotten a uh, handout for the meeting from Jill with, uh, where we are showing the 40,000 for the uh, HVAC upgrades. Does anyone have any questions on that at this time? No. Jim, was there anything you wanted to add or you good? No, I mean, that's right from the, that was just from last meeting. So that should be on everybody, fresh on everybody's mind. So it's just, you know, maybe a little redundant having this in there, but it's just to carry forward until something else changes. So nothing new to add. I, I like it being redundant, Jim. I like keeping that in front of us and especially the format it's in um, so that we all see it and are, are cognizant of it. So I, I, I really liked getting that uh, as part of the meeting packet. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is review and tentative approval of an MOU, draft MOU between the Board of Ed and the, and the town. Um, what I'm going to tell you is that Jim and uh, Attorney Londrigan worked really well and hard on putting this together. And um, I will, uh, um, what I'm gonna say now is I had a conversation with the chairman of the Board of Ed who has said to me that he does not anticipate needing money before January 1st. Uh, so we won't need to put this MOU in place because after January 1st, we'll be able to do line item transfers and uh, transfers within the budget. Uh, so this was a way that we could do it, creating this uh, fund line within, and the, the funds would be available to the Board of Ed ahead of January 1, but at the current time, there's no action for us, so we'll just keep that in case there's an emergency that comes up of some kind with COVID or something and have that at our disposal. But I don't think we need any discussion on it at this time. Uh, Jim, are you, can you comment on that too? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, we talked about whether, well, I think you uh, actually summed it up very well, Tim. It's the Board of Ed just doesn't anticipate needing the money. And if they do, instead of having it just go through the rigmarole of setting up a, a, lap, a non lapsing uh, account fund. We will just uh, use our the WPCA SIP money that we no longer need because there's a million dollars in there that we no longer need because uh, it's been it's going through the bond lot. It's going to be used. Uh, excuse me, the bond funds will will fund that those projects. So that money we have a million dollars in reserve to cover anything SIP, uh, COVID-19 related and others beyond that so we're in good shape tim are we still anticipating getting 470 back from them actually i got i, I believe i got gary's fi final numbers today and it looks like it's actually going to be 596,000 surplus wow somebody revived me okay you got 596 is that you said jim yes that's correct 596 okay. 596,000 thank you great All right, so that's that's great, Jim. Thanks. Um, and then, uh, as you all, especially those of us who have kids in the school system, um, know and have seen, or are campaigning, uh, the uh, COVID in, uh, infection rate is basically tripled in the last couple of weeks in southeastern Connecticut. So um, we're we're kind of got to stand by at the ready for them at this time, because I'm not sure what's going to happen schools, town hall, you know, everything. So um, we'll just have to be ready. If something needs to happen, um, we'll just get together and deal with it. Mr. Chairman, yes. I have a question. I'm reading this, this memo and the Oops. actually approves the initial, the expenditures as they come up. It's like the Board of Ed can spend this money without our approval. Help me clarify that for me. You, you, Glenn, you cut out a little bit in the middle of your first opening part. Can you ask it one more time, please? 
I don't see in this memorandum of understanding where the Board of Finance approves each individual request from the Board of Ed. It's like they can blanket access this and we can audit it after the fact. So going through the um, going through the state statute, it's written kind of uh, it is not written in a very direct way, but it is implied that it is uh, the um, the, the fund ought, would be used in that exact manner. Uh, so we had some wording that was changing, but when we were, what we were going to do is, remember, we decide, the Board of Finance decides how much money to fund that, to put in that, that line item fund. So uh -huh. if, if we have a specific that we know they've got, uh, let's say $200,000 in COVID related uh, um, monies that they need to get sooner or not later for whatever it is, and we say, yeah, we can fund that line right away and then they can spend it right away. But we don't have to put more than that 200 in. We don't have, you know, we, we decide how much money goes in there. And a lot of the things that right now I am talking about with the chair of the Board of Ed are really more capital items that they may need to fix. And so that would really be done through a SIP line by line. It would not be through this direction of funding. Okay, but to, they make a request to us to use Glenn, funds from this yeah, non lapsing account. Glenn, hang on. And then we second. approve it a specific Glenn, amount each time. Glenn, well, hang on. Tim, Let me get Jim in here. Jim Sullivan, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but this MOU is is a moot, is moot. It's a moot point. We're not we're not doing this. Correct. This is at this so point is, right now. It is a moot point. We do not need to do it. However, we've got a framework should we need something quickly where they have a defined need that they need before January 1. Yes, Glenn, if they need money, we'll transfer, we'll transfer it from the SIP account, which would be controlled by the Board of Finance. So right. the Board of, board of Ed would come to the Board of Finance and say, we need extra funding for this, that, and the other thing. And then the Board of Finance could, would, would decide whether or not to fund it with a, SIP, a transfer from the SIP fund. I guess. My reluctance is to have a pool of money that can be accessed with unfettered degree by the Board of Ed. We're only going to no populate this this fund only after we get a request. Then I take it. But it's actually pretty fettered, Glenn. At, at this point, so that I'm clear to everyone on the Board of Finance, at this point, that fund will not be created at all. Okay. At this point, the Board of Education is saying only after January 1 might they need monies. And at that point, it is a line item transfer. It is not out of this fund. This fund is only if they needed emergency monies prior to January 1, which at this point, they do not. And we will discuss it again before signing, I'm sure. So. Correct. This would not be just unilaterally implemented. It would be discussed again by the Board of Finance, agreed upon, sent to the Board of Ed to agree upon it, and then we would um, move forward and populate the line with the amount of money that we believe they specifically need for that. Gotcha. Any other questions at this point about that? Or I don't think there's anything. At this point, we're in kind of a wait and see with that. So there's no action and, and it will not be, without the full consent of the Board of Finance, it will not be uh, entered into without our discussion. But I don't anticipate at this point needing to enter into that. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is discussion of the accounting treatment of the Board of Ed Cares Act grant receipts. Jim, I'm gonna turn this one right over to you. Okay, the reason I put that on there, because I know that was part of, you know, a concern of some of the board members at the last meeting, you know, if they have this grant <coughs> money and what they need, the non-lapsing fund and so forth. Uh, but to that, to that end, the, uh, the Board of Ed was awarded $280,000 of, uh, of funded federal funding through the CARES Act for uh, you know unanticipated expenditures or increased expenditures due to the COVID-19 crisis. So that money is directly accessible by the Board of Ed. So it, with that money in place, they may never need to come, come back to the to the town for an additional appropriation. That money is going through a special revenue fund, a federal 
uh, federal grants fund that's already established for other types of fund, you know, special education, uh, Title One, Title Two, a bunch of other federal grants they have. So that's a special revenue fund that's already in existence, and the Board of Ed will be accounting for it through that fund themselves. Any questions about that? I don't think so. Actually, just uh, give one follow up though. It, so, the board that's supposed to be getting uh, state money as well. Do you, do you know when that's expected to happen and, and what the process will be there? I don't. I mean, okay. I don't know that this is state money. I mean, this is money is probably it's probably coming through the state department of education. Whether it's going to be actual state state money, that I don't know. Okay, all right. We, we can follow up with the, the Board of Ed directly. Yep. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is correspondence. Jim, did we get any correspondence? No, just the one you, you noted earlier, nothing else. Okay. And just so that the Board of Finance members know and saw, uh, we edited the um, instructions on the agenda as to how to put in written uh, correspondence for the Board of Ed uh, uh, kind of followed the way the Board of, uh, sorry, to the Board of Finance following the way that the Board of Ed does on theirs. So that there is a time limit that it must be in by to be read at the meeting. Uh, liaison reports, so please on anything going on there? No, nope, just waiting for the meetings to start. It's Lynn. All right, Lynn, want to do WPCA? Uh, kind of, we're in a holding pattern there too, but happy to have the bond because stuff is breaking as we expected it would. But, um, you know, we're hoping that by spring of 2021, we can get the diversion going to help both the borough plant and lift the moratorium in Mystic. That's it. All right, thank you. Um, Board of Ed liaison report, anything? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I met with uh, Chairman Tedisco. We had a conversation via Zoom or actually on the phone, and uh, he brought me up to date on the actions the board is taking to unscramble a lot of the issues, and uh, I think he'll be able to achieve that within a couple months. Great. I know it's for a day, but it's, it, it's where we are at this time. Great. Um, I will add a follow on. I am going to have a meeting on Friday morning sometime with Peter Anderson. Um, they had another light in the gym go. And if the Board of Finance members remember, there was a proposal that they were looking at as changing over those uh, uh, lights to LED lights is part of the rebate from Eversource. So, um, the current chair of the Board of Ed, myself and Peter, will be getting together to discuss that because they've got 40 some odd lights that they want to change over because they have a, when the ballasts fail, they tend to have a fire and, and a release of, of bad of bad fumes for the kids. So um, we're going to be looking at that uh, on Friday morning. And then I will make sure to share with all of you any outcomes of that meeting. Are there any other uh, liaison reports that anyone has or barring that, I think uh, yeah, but, sorry. motion to so, Mike, just one from uh, some offices. Uh, got, a, got an email from Linda earlier this week, our tax collector, uh, just with an update uh, now that we've closed quarter one uh, on collections. And uh, again, uh, as I think I shared previously, the trend, the trend was, uh, Positive and, and continues to, to be positive. Uh, at, at the end of quarter one, we're up $929,436 uh, relative to uh, or compared to the first quarter of, of last year. So, um, so you know, Linda and the, the rest of the team there in the tax office continue to do an excellent job uh, uh, collecting, uh, collecting the taxes they're due. So just wanted to share that. Pretty impressive, but I, you know, 
that's, it's also kind of scary <laughs> um, because I think people are paying their taxes early, not sure if they're what the job situation is going to be, especially uh, this fall and winter. So, um, anyone else? With anything? Tim, I have a quick question just regarding um, letters from the public. Is there any type of protocol if a letter is um, appropriate or is there any kind of, I'm just curious if there's any kind of protocol from letters from the public. So I've been working with um, the first selectman and the town attorney on that. Uh, and if you notice that the, the letter that we received, um, we read a statement of the intent of the letter of what we believe the intent was and the letter will be uh, attached to the minutes, but it will not be read uh, if there is something. And then if there is something that is um, aggressive, inflammatory or uh, personal attacking, then we'll have to engage both the town attorney and um, others to address that. But uh, if it just is topics that are wide ranging, we have an ability. Uh, the town attorney ver did verify that we have an ability to summarize what they're what they're talking about and uh, move forward from that. Thank you. Uh, anything else, or I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So Lynn with the motion. Glenn with a second. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Tim.